and going to many places, to the battles, to Hajj. He was in Medina, also praying wudu in front of Muslims. I mean, wudu is something which is being performed in daily basis more than one time. Also salah. Salah is being performed by the Prophet every day at least five times. Still, if you go to the books of Muslims, you will find in wudu many differences. In salah, how to perform salah, many differences. If you go to the books which were being compiled under the title Sifat wa Salat al-Nabi means how the Prophet performed Salah we find in those books great deal of differences leave aside Shia Muslims and Sunni Muslims take only Sunni Muslims you will find among Sunnis for example some of them say that you should fold your hands in this way somebody, somebody else says no you should put it on your chest some say no put it on your right or left different types though the prophet prayed his salah in front of everyone which means that there is a very big deal of misleading and misinforming among Muslims because of political reasons. The real Sunnah of the Prophet were being kept aside. They tried to keep it away from people. Now, we say that if you want to know how the Prophet performed wudu and how the Prophet performed Salah, and how the Prophet performed Hajj, fasting, jihad, Amr Ma'roof, Nay al-Munkar, any, any Islamic duty, where to go? Where to go? Shall we go this side or that side? On, as you know that Muslims in their books, I mean, we have got an all, Sunni books and Shia books as well that the Muslim Ummah will be divided into 73 sects. All of them will be wrong except only one will be the right group who are following the real Islam. So where to go? A new Muslim coming to Islam, where he should go? The answer is very clear. Go to the most authentic who have got the most best level of piousness and the topmost level of knowledge about Islam who are the Ahlul Bayt about whom the Prophet said أُوصِيكُمُ اللَّهِ بِأَهْلِ بَيْتِي أُوصِيكُمُ اللَّهِ بِأَهْلِ بَيْتِي He said clearly that I am leaving behind two very weighty things as far as you keep following both of them, you will never go astray. The book of Allah, Quran, and my progeny, Ahlul Bayt. This is the authentic hadith, not the hadith which has been spread among people which is not authentic at all, which says, Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. There is no such hadith. There is no hadith of Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. I mean the Quran, the book of Allah and my Sunnat. No. Go to all the six books of hadith of our Sunni brothers. Get me one book narrating this narration of Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. There is no one. No one. It is a fabricated narration which was fabricated long after the Prophet. And that's why no one from the six main books of Hadith which are called Sahih as Sitta, the six Sahih books. No book from them narrated the narration of Kitab Allah wa Sunnati, the book of Allah and my Sunnat. The authentic narration, authentic Hadith is Kitab Allah wa Itrati Ahl Bayti, which is narrated in Tirmidhi, 
and in many eminent books of hadith, even the Wahhabis, you know, nowadays, the Wahhabis consider Nasr al-Din Albani, Nasr al-Din al-Albani, they consider him as one of the very prominent scholars in hadith. He has, in his book, Al-Silsil al-Sahiha, he has said that this hadith of Kitab Allah wa Atrati is an authentic hadith, Sahih. So, the way is this. If you want to know how the Prophet performed wudu, go to Ahl al-Bayt. They will tell you because they know exactly how did the Prophet perform wudu. If you want to know exactly how the Prophet performed salah, go to them. The question that there is difference between the way of wudu of Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims. I say that there are differences in the wudu of Sunni Muslims themselves. <coughs> go to the book of Ibn Rushd, Bidayat al-Mujtahid, which is one of the very important Sunni books in the Muslim library in Fiqh. Go and see how the differences. Go to Al-Fiqh Al-Madhahab Al-Arba'ah by Al-Jaziri and look at it and see the differences. We say that we are following the prophetic wudu. Wudu Mainly, the main difference is whether to wash the feet or to wipe over it, wipe on it. The authentic hadith is that al wudu ghaslatani wa mashatan. This is a hadith narrated by Sunnis and Shias. Ibn Abbas the famous narrator, he narrated this hadith that wudu is two washings, means washing the face and washing the hands, and two wipings, means wiping over the head and the feet. Mm. I'd like an important to... question. Yes. If you go to Al Mu'ajam Al Kabir by Tabarani, uh, volume 3, page. 200, 280 in the Arabic edition, the hadith says that one of the Sahaba by the name of Abi Malik Al Ash'ari he went to his tribe and he told them, I would like to show you the Salah of the Prophet. اجتمعوا أصلي بكم بصلاة أو صلاة رسول الله come gather together all of you let me show you the salah of the prophet so all have come he called for water and he performed wudu in front of them exactly as he saw the Prophet performing wudu. What did he? He said that he washed his face and he washed his hands and then he wiped over his head and wiped over his feet. That is in Al Mu'jam Al Kabir by Tabarani, volume 3, page 280. Okay. In Musnad Ahmad bin Hanbal, and as you know, Ahmad bin Hanbal is the Imam, the leader of Hanbali sect, which is considered the most extreme sect among the Sunnis. And because of that, Wahhabis, in fact, were generated from Hanbali sect. Though they are now different from Hanbalis, but look at Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal, volume 1, page 58. Uthman bin Affan, he called for water and 
performed wudu in front of people by washing his face and washing his both hands and wiping over his head and wiping over his feet. And he said, I performed wudu exactly as I saw the Prophet performing wudu. What more evidence do you want? That wudu is this. There is no washing of the feet in the wudu. Yes, you can wash after the wudu. But Allah in Quran clearly said, فَاغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ Wash your faces and your hands from elbow. وَامْسَحُوا and wipe over بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ أَوْ أَرْجُلِكُمْ Wipe over your head and your feet. Ibn Abbas, the famous narrator, he said that Quran is very clear that the feet must be wiped in wudu. But people are insisting on something different. He said, إِنِّي لَا أَجِدُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ إِلَّا الْمَسْحِ وَيَأْبَ النَّاسُ إِلَّا الْغَسْلِ Quran clearly says, wipe over your feet. But some people are insisting on that. There are reasons. When this wudu was started, there are reasons. But in short, with due respect to all those who follow any Islamic sect, we say that following Ahlul Bayt is following the real Islam. I have here in front of me Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, one of the very important books of Hadith among our Sunni brothers, volume 1, page 27, narrating from Ibn Abbas, أبا الناس إلا الغسل ولا أجد في كتاب الله إلا المسح. People are insisting on washing their feet, and I don't find in the Quran, in the book of Allah, but only wiping all the feet. So, same hadith also from Ibn Abbas is narrated in Sunan Ibn Majah, volume 1, page 156. So in short, the differences between Shia Muslims and others are based on the references from where you got the Sunnah of the Prophet. We got the Sunnah of the Prophet from Ahlul Bayt who are the most authentic and most knowledgeable. Others got the narrations from others. And that is the reason of the differences. And that's why also you find among Sunni sects a lot of differences in many matters. For example, folding hands. According to Malik bin Anas, is makruh in the obligatory salah. And for that, if you go to Maliki Masjid, mainly in North Africa and, and, and many of the African countries where the Maliki sect is dominant, you find them during salat. Salat al-wajiba means obligatory salah. They never hold their hand. The Malikis, who are Sunnis. But other sects, but keep in mind, that Abu Hanifa and Shafi'i and Ahmed bin Hanbal and Sufyan and other leading Imams of the Sunnis, none of them say that folding hands in Salah is wajib, is obligatory. None of them said it is obligatory. Sayyid Sabiq, a very prominent Sunni alim in, in Al-Azhar, wrote a very big book called Fiqh Sunnah in which he says, we don't have, he said, we don't have any authentic hadith that the Prophet ever folded his hands during Salah. Okay. 